Hi, my name is Josh Whedon, and in this video, I'll be presented the presenting the nested subset differential attack, a practical direct attack against LUV, which forged the signature within 210 minutes. This is a joint work by Jim Tai Ding, myself, Vishaka, and Bo Yun Yang. And I'll be turning off the webcam so you can properly see the slides. First, I'll talk about the general construction of multivariate signature schemes. Then we'll look at the oil of vinegar signature scheme in particular. Then we'll look at the lifted and balanced oil and vinegar scheme, which is what we attack in our paper. Then we'll look at the subfield differential attack, which is our original attack against the lifted and balanced oil and vinegar scheme. And then we'll look finally look at our new contribution, the nested subset differential attack. Multivariate signature schemes. In a multivariate signature scheme, the public key P is an m-tuple of multivariate polynomials over a finite field. The private key is a way to compute P inverse, by which we do not necessarily mean that P is invertible, but we have a way of finding preimages. The method of signing a hash of a document is finding a, one of these preimages X of a hash Y. The verification process is simply noting that Y is the output P of X. The theoretical foundation for these schemes is that solving a set of n randomly chosen equations, which are nonlinear, with n variables is NP-complete, but this does not necessarily ensure the security of the systems, because P will have some hidden structure which you can attack. For efficiency, we mainly look at quadratic constructions, and this can be justified mathematically as any set of high-degree polynomial equations can be reduced to a set of quadratic equations, as in the following example. The oil and vinegar signature scheme. The oil and vinegar signature scheme was introduced by Padron in 1997. It is both simple and efficient. It was inspired by the linearization attack to the Matsuo Mai cryptosystem. Here, P, the public key, is the composition of two maps, F and T. F is quadratic, but it's easy to compute F inverse, and again that means finding preimages. T is invertible and linear, it is used to hide the structure of F. We see that X is equal to P inverse of Y can be found by first computing F inverse of Y is equal to W, and then T inverse of W is equal to X. Let FQ be the finite field of size Q, and M times M and V be natural numbers and set n is equal to m plus v. The map f is called the central map, and is an m-tuple of quadratic polynomials and n variables. We divide the variables into two types. The first is the vinegar variables, which is x1, x2, up to xv. The second is the oil variables, xv plus 1, xv plus 2, up to xn. For convenience, we have the following two index sets. v, which is 1, 2, up to v, and O, which is V plus 1, V plus 2, up to N. This means that XI is a vinegar variable if I is in V, and XI is an oil variable if I is in O. Each central map polynomial, FK, is in the following oil and vinegar form. Here we're going to have vinegar times vinegar variables, vinegar times oil variables, vinegar by itself, oil by itself, and a constant where each of the coefficients comes from the finite field. Notice that there are no oil times oil terms. Thus, by guessing for each of the vinegar variables, say xi is equal to nu i for i and v, we have a linear polynomial in m variables. Here this will become a constant, this will become linear, this will become a constant, this will stay linear, and this will stay a constant. Thus we have a simple and efficient way of finding a preimage of y which is in fq to the m. First, randomly guess for the vinegar variables for each quadratic equation and f of x is equal to y. Then, attempt to solve the resulting m linear equations and m variables, say by Gaussian elimination. If a solution exists, then you have found the preimage. In the very unlikely event that one does not, simply try to another guess for the vinegar variables. The reason that the different variable types are called oil, oil and vinegar comes from salad dressing, where the oil and vinegar involved are not fully mixed. By the composition of T, we see the public key P of X is equal to F composed of T of X seems to be a random quadratic system as the oil and vinegar structure is now hidden. 
there are some broken parameters for oil and vinegar schemes. The first is when V was equal to M, which is now called balanced oil and vinegar. This was defeated by Kipnis and Shamir using advanced subspaces in 1998. Also broken is when V is less than M, and this can be broken by guessing for some of the variables as this can turn it into a balanced oil and vinegar system where V is equal to M, and then again you can defeat it by the method of Kipnis and Shamir. If V is much greater than M, then finding a solution is generally easy for all quadratic systems. So the usable parameters for oil and vinegar schemes is V is equal to 2 times O, 3 times O, or similar ratios. The ratio used by L U of V is slightly larger. This is called unbalanced oil and vinegar, U of V, and the direct attacks against it do not work as the complexity is the same as solving a random system. Beyond the direct attack, there are attacks which make use of the U of V structure, like the intersection attack by word bullions, which must be accounted for in picking parameters. This is less efficient as the number of variables increases, as now the signature is at least twice the size of a document when you have it being twice M or thrice M, and so on. There are developments from basic U of V to improve the efficiency of the scheme. Importantly, one is the Rainbow Signature Scheme by Gentai Ding and Dieter Schmidt in 2005, which is a multi-layer version of U of V. It is a NIST post-quantum cryptography standardization finalist. Another is LUV, which we'll now discuss. Lifted Unbalanced Oil and Vinegar LUV was a round two NIST candidate designed by Ward Balloons et al. in 2017. It is a variant of UV that implements two previous refinements of UV, as well as the lifting modification for which it is named. The previ two previously known refinements will not be important for our attack, we only briefly describe them here. The first, original by Peter Sisbrick, is to choose the affine transformation T in the following shape. Here 1 sub V is the V times V identity matrix, 1 sub M is the M times M identity matrix, and T is a V times M matrix with randomly chosen coefficients. The second, originally by Albrecht Pitstolt, is to use a seed and a pseudo-random number generator to generate both the private key and the public key. The third modification from which LUV gets its name is the focus of our attack. LUV takes an oil and vinegar private key over a small field and lifts it to an extension field from which it signs the signatures. This allows more efficient storage of the public and private keys. Let F to the R be the extension field of F2 of degree R and N is equal to V plus M. The central map F will take F to the R to the N to F2 to the R to the M. And each of these uh, polynomials, Fk, takes the oil and vinegar form. However, the coefficients, A, B, C, will only be in F2, so either 0 or 1. We also choose T in the following shape, where T is a V times N matrix whose entries are also from this small field F2. From the third modification, we see the public key P of X is equal to F composed of T of X, also has coefficients only in F2, but maps F to the R to the N to F to the R to the M. We will call such polynomials lifted. In 2019, Dinget L published the subfield differential attack, SDA, against LUV, which broke the parameter sets proposed. In response, the authors of LUV proposed new parameters, which in particular made the degree of the extension field prime, which protects against SDA. Here's a table of the six new parameter sets. Our attack in SDA is against the three cases when R is equal to 7, and it breaks these completely. Subfield differential attack. Now let us describe the original attack against LUV and the inspiration for, which is the inspiration for our new attack, which is called the subfield differential attack. It is a direct attack against LUV, meaning we will try to forge a signature X for a given message Y by directly solving P of X is equal to Y. SDA relies on the quotient ring representation of finite fields. If we take a base field F2 and an extension field F to the R, we can write F to the R as the following quotient ring, where D divides R and G of T is an irreducible polynomial of degree R divided by D. Thus, elements in F to the R can be represented by degree R divided by D minus one polynomials 
and the polynomial ring over f to the d. It is more efficient to solve a quadratic system over f to the d than over the extension field f to the r. So the goal of SDA and later in SDA is to turn the, the problem solving over f to the r to solving over f to the d. SDA achieved this by selecting a random differential x prime and defining a new map p tilde of x bar which takes f to the d to the n to f to the r to the m so x bar is assumed to be in f to the d to the n where uh, f to the d is a subfield of f to the r as each quadratic in p has coefficients only in f2 and x prime is a vector of random degree of polynomials of random degree r divided by d minus 1 polynomials from the qu that quotient ring by multiplying out p tilde of x bar and collecting terms by the powers of t we have the following a random quadratic system q naught of x bar of m equations for when t is raised to the power of zero which is just one and r divided by d minus one linear systems li of x bar each of m equations for ti i is equal to one two and so on to r divided by d minus one so in SDA, to put a signature for a given message y, which we will de decompose into the sum y0 plus y1t all the way to y r divided by d minus 1, t to the r divided by d minus 1, but for each i, y sub i is in the vector space f2 to the d to the m, where that's over that intermediate field, we first find the solution space to the system of r divided by d minus 1 times m linear equations, li of x bar is equal to yi over f to the d and then over the solution space we'll try to find the solution to the m quadratic equations q naught of x bar is equal to y naught however with the choice of prime r even we're just having r is equal to 7 the only available subfield is f2 which is too small to find the solution in all of these equations for the chosen parameter sets now to visualize this this is what we were look oh, the original public key p looked like p was taking a very large domain and to a relatively small range and so you'd always expect to have at least one s solution however in the sda attack we were limiting what our domain was to what's highlighted in green and this right here is smaller than the range we would not expect a solution to exist nested subset differential attack the nested subset differential attack in sda will solve this issue by utilizing a larger subset subset of the domain to search for a signature in and we'll search in a more systematic manner than simply randomly choosing a differential now first we'll define s truncation for s which is going to be in between 0 and r minus 1 we define the s truncation of an element a to be just when we limit the powers of t to be s. So originally they could go up to r minus 1, now we're limiting them to being s. And we define the s truncation of a polynomial to be term by term s truncations of its coefficients, and a system of polynomials to be s truncation of each polynomial individually. We will, the subset we will search in will be the following e to the power of n, where each of the um, polynomials will be truncated to the third power. Now, if you look on this set, the domain is much larger than the range again. Now, let's look at the lemma on lifted polynomials. We let f, which takes f to the r to the n, to f to the r, be a lifted quadratic with it being in the following form. And we let a not a1 up to a l minus 1 be elements in f2 to the n. We have that for f of a0 plus a1t plus so on to al minus 1 t to the l minus 1 plus x to the l. That this is true. All the quadratic terms will be coefficients of t to the power of 2 times l. The linear terms are coefficients of t to the power of l to the power of l plus 1 and t to the power of 2 times l minus 1. And the coefficients of t to the power h depends only on what the original coefficients are, alpha and beta, and the a k, 
for k is less than or equal to h. And when we have that k is going to be greater than h, it will also depend on x. This can be shown by simply expanding out and collecting the powers of t for this polynomial here. Using the previous lemma, we will construct a signature for y is equal to, and here we, again we're de decomposing it into the following sum, where each of these y sub i's are going to be uh, elements of the uh, subfields vector space, piece by piece using differentials. However, instead of choosing the differentials randomly like an SEA, we'll instead solve for them one after the other. For r is equal to 7, this can be done in four steps. For our attack to be efficient, we will, will want to always solve no more than m quadratic equations over f2 for at least as many variables as equations. Throughout, x bar will be an indeterminate point in f2 to the power of n. First, we construct the following system of equations where we've taken the zero truncation of p at x bar, and this each of the q's is a quadratic polynomial over f2. And we're going to uh, let a not be a solution to q, and this right here is the um, uh, term of y sub naught. So we just solve this following quadratic equation system of quadratic equations over f2. Second, we look at the one truncation of p bar of a naught plus x bar t, which takes the following form where each of the l's are linear equations. And we'll let a1 be a solution to that linear system. Third, we construct the two truncation of p of a naught plus a1 t plus x bar t to the power 2, and we solve this linear system here. We're going to let a2 be a solution to that linear system. Finally, we set capital A is equal to a naught plus a1 t plus a2 t squared, and construct p of a plus x bar t to the power 3, and we try to find a solution for all of this over f2 to the n. And we do this by finding the solutions place s for the system of linear equations first, and then we let a3 be a solution to, to the set of quadratic systems over this solution space. We then have that p of a0 plus a1t plus a2t squared plus a3t to the power 3 is equal to y. Now, in this day, we'll be successful provided each of the systems of equations we tried to solve do have solutions. As the four steps quadratic system is the one with the least amount of variables, having first solved the 3 times m linear equations, its probability of success is what we estimate treating the quadratic system as a random function. We see that for the parameters given, we'll find the solution. And the way that we estimate this probability of success is found in our paper. Now the most costly part of NSDA is solving the quadratic system in step 1 and the quadratic system in step 4. As these will be undetermined systems over F2, a rest estimate of the complexity required is log base 2n to the power of n plus 2 field multiplications for each system using an exhaustive such method, where here n is the number of equations involved. This is far below the NIST required complexity for each level. In fact, the complexity for the level 1 parameter set is so low that a practical attack is possible against it. We ran an experimental attack against a public key with level 1 parameters, and we were able to forge a signature in 210 minutes. For four details, please refer to our paper. Conclusion We have proposed a modified version of the subfield differential attack called nested subset differential attack, which fully breaks half the parameter sets for, put forward by the round 2 version of lifted and balanced oil and vinegar. We have reduced attacking these parameter sets to the problem solving quadratic equations over the prime field F2. This makes our attack effective enough to be formed practically. Uh, thank you for watching the video. We would like to show our appreciation for the support by the TAF Fund, NIST, and the NSF. Please have a good one.